So I, I was thinking about this verse in John chapter 5. And in <clears throat> probably a verse that, um, that we're more familiar with is verse 24. But I want to talk about verse 25. We prayed, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so verse 25 here in John chapter 5. <clears throat> truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and now is here. when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those will, who hear will live. Now, when you, if you read the rest of the passage, it talks about you know, the events coming up at the end of the ages. And, and, uh, but I was fascinated here by couple things. <clears throat> Number one, Jesus has this way and the Greeks have this way of, of like trying to grab your attention. So we, we might say like, you know, uh, I want you to give me your undivided attention. Or we might say to a child, I want you to really listen to me when I, you know, I want you to, you better hear what I'm going to say to you next. You know, so that's kind of like what Jesus, hopefully you don't have to do it that way, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you do. I got in trouble one time with a, with a kid in, in Sunday school because I grabbed him by the shoulders and I told him in no uncertain terms that he was to listen to me. I got reported. <laughs> but Jesus is doing that here. He's, he's saying in the King James, it says, verily, verily. He says, like, he said, he's saying, like, I'm, I'm hanging out with you 24-7. I'm with you all the time. And we're, we have a lot of things being said. <clears throat> but he's, he's saying, I want you to get this into your thick skull, into your thick heart. He says, I say to you, <clears throat> an hour is coming. And I love this next little phrase. And now is. And the ESV says, <clears throat> and is now here. That hour is, is now here. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, <clears throat> and those who hear will live. And I, I was just thinking this you know, last night and this morning, that, that how often we live in Bible information, we live in generalities, we live in, you know, like maybe if you've been around for a while, you know all kinds of categorical doctrines. And, and uh, <clears throat> but, you know, for instance, in John chapter 8, where it talks about the woman caught in adultery. And imagine there she is thinking she's going to be stoned and then the Lord Jesus talks and then he says to her, and I don't know if she was dead in that moment, but you know, she, he said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. 
And for her in that moment, that was a life imparting situation. Now, can you imagine having heard that from the mouth of Jesus Christ? And every time you would think about sinning in the future, you would think back on, on just, I heard him. I remember what he said to me. See, it's not, it's, she knew condemnation. She knew rejection. She knew being caught in transgress in, in, in you know with her hand in the cookie jar. She 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 knew all about that. And she heard the voice of the Son of God saying to her, Neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. And then imagine in John chapter 15 and verse 3 where Jesus said, <clears throat> King James I think says, you are now clean because of the words. I don't know. I mean, I, I have to take a bath. <laughs> I had to do all kinds of things, you know, to get clean, and you put on deodorant and shave, and then you know, we go through our routines, you know. But you know, think of the simplicity of what Christ was saying here. Through, it's now here. You can be cleansed simply by hearing the voice of the Lord Jesus. So that woman in adultery, her, her, her condemnation was taken. But you know what else? Her, the filth, the memory, the shame, the disgrace. God says, now, Christ said, now you are clean through the words that I've spoken to you. No wonder in John chapter 6, verse 68, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are we supposed to go? Hmm. <clears throat> you alone have the words of Zoe life. Remember in John chapter 7, they said of him, they said, why didn't you arrest them and bring him here? And they said, you know what? Nobody ever talked mm -hmm. like that guy. No one ever spoke like that guy. <clears throat> then uh, I was thinking in line of what we've been hearing on uh, Thursday nights from where Je in John chapter 34, It says this, uh, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. That's, you know, Pastor Chuck's brought that out, that Jesus said that. Hmm. And John picked it up. <clears throat> now, He, he even says in John in First John chapter two, he says, "Beloved, I'm not writing. I'm, I'm writing to you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you've heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that I've that you have heard, and at the same time, it is a new commandment that I'm writing to you, which is true in Him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining." So why would Jesus say a new commandment I'm giving unto you? And I, I kind of like, um, he says, I'm giving. And the, and the word in the Greek for giving is, you know, it just sort of popped out at me last night as I was looking at it. It's an expression of generosity. Now we we're hearing about how you know that that the how the wicked border patrol people are are using horses 
on the border to 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 uh, to abuse the people that are sneaking into the country and so forth, and uh, they're trying to say that this authority that's being expressed is a, an authority based in what? Not in generosity, not in love, not in compassion, but in, in, in something evil and something wicked, an expression of, you know, of uh, white supremacy or whatever. And, um, So Jesus is command. He says, "I'm giving you a commandment. It's a new commandment, and this this commandment that means new. It means um, here. It means it's uh, unknown, strange, remarkable. Uh, it's unheard of. It's unusual. But listen to this. It is of a higher excellence. It's new in character." New as opposed to the old and former, and and it's new because it's it's bringing in something loftier, noble, and and something that's completely different. You know, we hear about love. I mean, you can't you can't turn on the media and and they're going to talk about love, aren't they? I mean, all the time. You know, the Beatles used to sing this song, "All We Need Is Love," and. And, and everybody's like harping on that new thing. But only, only Christ makes it what? He brings in something from his generosity, from his supply, from his, we don't just follow his example. We hear his word. And then we live in what he's talking about. We hear him speak to our hearts. And maybe I'm dead in that area. Maybe I'm not what I'm supposed to be in a particular area. You know, maybe a father says in Ephesians that fathers shouldn't provoke their children to wrath. And some, so we can get, as a father, we can get on an authoritative trip and, and not and not express what this new command this brand new loftier nobler uh, expression of who God wants to be in us <clears throat> so isn't it interesting let's just finish up with one verse in Romans and it's found in Romans chapter 7 verse 6 and here it says um but now we are released from mere knowledge, from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit. So we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. We're to serve God because we've what? We, I've heard him speak. I've heard him. I hear him. If I'm in a situation with a relationship, I go to God and I, God, I say, God, speak to me about this need. Speak to me about this situation. Speak to me with words that will bring life rather than bondage, something else. So